If God made us, and He did, and if God is good, and He is, and if God's design for us is for our best, and it is, then God's design is never going to be stifling for any human being. So if we've experienced stifling, I can guarantee it's not because of God's design. When we learn to revel in the countercultural truths of Scripture about how men and women are to live with one another, minister with one another, relate to one another, we suddenly find out that far from being stifling, they're liberating. And you know, when you go to Ephesians 5 and you learn that husbands are called, Christian husbands are called to love their wives in light of the atoning work of Jesus Christ, that, that changes how a woman looks at respecting her husband. Um, and when you, when you learn that a woman is called to respect her husband in the same way that the church respects the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, it's an exhilarating thing. And then when you learn that that is supposed to be a picture of the gospel to the world, that the way a Christian husband and a Christian wife relate is to be a living, breathing, walking, talking picture of what the gospel does in the church. And that means that every Christian marriage has an enormous privilege of living out a picture of the gospel to the world. And I, I think that when we begin to realize that, it makes the hard work of actually doing that not stifling, but exhilarating and exciting. I tell every couple that comes into my office, you know, one thing that is for certain is you two are going to disappoint one another. You know, and the glorious thing about that is that is precisely when you have the opportunity to manifest the power of the gospel. When you forgive one another in a relationship, that is a glorious manifestation of the gospel. You know, when, when, when your spouse has hurt you deeply, when your spouse has let you down, then you get to love like our Heavenly Father loved us. And that's when the power of the gospel is at its greatest.